So, so much is unknown right now. Obviously, we're all feeling um, anxiety. I think many of us are getting triggered, myself included. Uh, there's a lot of uh, dense emotion that we might say is swar swarming around everyone. And I would say in response to emotion, most of us do several things. We dissociate from it, we numb out, um, we distract ourselves, we get really busy, uh, we distance ourselves from it. Um, we might buy copious amounts of toilet paper as a way to deal with emotion. And yet what I'd like to do today in this practice is create sacred space, and you're creating that for yourself on your mat in your home. Um, create sacred space to just simply feel what we're feeling. The yoga practice is so beautiful at helping draw up emotion, whether it be irritability, anger, sadness, fear, freaking out. The practice is designed to routinely clean and cleanse and clear all of that emotion out of our body because when we've got stuck emotion, we're stuck, right? We feel less, um, we're less able to connect, we're less able to get clear and have uh, clarity about what we need to do next. And so today is a really purifying, cleansing class to start to help you release emotion, which may mean in the privacy of your own home, you have a lot of tears coming today or um, you have a lot of angst showing up. I'm gonna encourage you to stick with this class. Try to stay with the whole class as a way to really do yourself um, the greatest benefit of purifying and getting um, more focused. So what we really have control over right now is our own individual bodies and our own individual minds. So if we all commit to keeping that as clear and unencumbered as possible, um, that's gonna help everyone. So let's take a nice seat today. By the way, Asana Y is a very immune system enhancing. So we're doing all of the poses that are known to really purify and bolster the immune system. So let's all sit well. I encourage you to sit up on something. Place your hands gently on the tops of your thighs. Point your finger, thumb lightly touch, palms face down. Take a nice deep breath in. As you exhale, close the eyes and start to feel your awareness and your attention pull inward and down. And let the breath really deepen. So taking more conscious, long inhales and more conscious, long exhales. And right now we already begin to set the tone and create the space, the sacred space for us to just commit in this next hour to feel more. One of my dear teachers has always said that emotions don't kill us. In fact, emotions are important for us to follow and feel and stick with because they're impermanent, they change, they don't stick unless we are unwilling to face or feel them. So as you're sitting here, setting this intention to create sacred space for the next hour to just be with yourself, you're also bolstering your deep connection to yourself, that sense of equanimity. So if we can be willing to feel our feelings, we start to create a deeper connection to ourselves. Feel your seat on the floor, feel your hands on your thighs. Is it possible for you to sit just slightly taller and as your spine elongates, allow the skin to soften and the face to soften and the jaw to soften. So for the next hour, no news, no text, just simply committing to this time with yourself as a way to bolster that sense of connection to your own root, your own frequency. So let's take palms together in front of the heart. 
So my larger intention for this practice today is just, again, creating a space for us to be able to feel and nurture ourselves. There's an additional intention that's important for you to set. Take a moment to do so. And then we'll chant the sound of Om. So even if you're alone chanting, getting out of the idea that your chant has to sound a certain way, rather this chanting is a way not only to open the throat, the heart, the mind, create some vibration in the body, but it does connect us. So even though we're all over Iowa, maybe outside of Iowa, I know some friends from Minnesota here today, just the simple sound of chanting together energetically connects us. Energy is beyond space and time. So we can all connect here as we chant. Take a breath in. As you exhale, really sigh out. See if you can blow out every bit of air in the lungs. We'll inhale together. Uh, breath in this time as you exhale bow towards hands and towards your heart slowly release the hands down to the thighs lift the head and open the eyes so we're going to start today on our back um, if you have a bolster that's ideal we're going to start in sort of a modified fish pose another option would to be to use two blacks one at the low level one at the high level or to use a long blanket roll like this. And this blanket roll will go right under the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. So I'll rest here on my bolster, sacrum right at the edge of the bolster. Legs can be straight or knees can be bent. We'll come over the bolster, over the blanket roll, over the blocks, arms out to the side. So we're starting today with this modified version of fish pose because it starts to really open the chest and the lungs. This pose also puts us in contact with the earth and earth is always inherently grounding and stabilizing for us, which is why spending more time outside in these coming days and weeks is going to be really important for all of us. So we'll start here, beginning to connect in a much more conscious way with our ujjayi breath, that ocean sounding breath in the back of the throat. We're going to be working with two different breath techniques today, which are both effective at immune system building. This first one is ujjayi, the typical yoga breath we always do in our practice. And then we'll end today with a breath technique called brahmari. So breathing into the abdomen, breathing into the belly. And on the exhale, really feeling and hearing the sound ha in the back of the throat. And together we'll count our exhales. Let's do five more of these, inhaling into the belly. You might even on the exhale, open your mouth and create that ha sound. Try to extend your exhale as long as possible. As you're breathing in this conscious way, you might even feel how there's just a slight pause at the top of the breath and a slight pause at the bottom of the breath. Can you start to really ground your attention into your body? So Ruminating, worry, anxious thoughts are sort of the norm right now. And if you don't do anything about it, you will start to have 
have more of those thoughts. So our work today is can you really begin to ground and stabilize into the body? Let's take one more nice full deep breath in here. As you exhale, begin to wiggle the fingers and toes, come off onto one side and all the way up to all fours. So coming to all fours, you're gonna start working through some cat-cow. I've had some um, extra people join and I think they're not muted, so I'm gonna mute um, people that aren't muted right now. So as you come to all fours, working with uh, cat-cow, so as you inhale, you'll extend your heart space and as you exhale, you will round up like a cat. All right, so keep going here. Inhaling forward, exhaling, rounding. Just keep that ujjayi breath going. So keeping the sound of the ocean in the back of the throat. And this practice today designed to really open the chest, the lungs. We'll end with some inversions today as well as a way to really bolster immune system function. In these early moments of the practice, the more you can keep your gaze inward, your eyes closed and, or maybe just your gaze down towards the floor, the more grounding and stabilizing, the more you start to get out of your head into the body. From here, walk the hands forward, curl the toes under and lift into your first downward facing dog. You can walk it out here, bending the knees, swaying the hips. Adding some movements through the spine. Lifting the heels high away from the mat and as you exhale, drop the heels over to the left. Feeling a deeper stretch through this right side, maybe even pulling the right hip back a little more. You can float this right arm up if you like. And we'll come back through center, heels lift high. As you exhale, drop the heels over to the right. Again, more of a stretch to the left side. You might lift this left arm up. And then from here, slowly releasing knees down to the earth. Take the knees wide, big toes touch, sink the hips towards the heels, forehead to the floor. Hands can come around towards the low back. You can have your arms forward or stack the hands, one on top of the other, forehead rest, right on the hands. So coming back to Ujjayi breath, five of them, breathing deeply into the belly, hearing your exhale. Remembering that what you're doing today is seeing if you can work at this individual level with your own body, with your own mind, knowing the more steadfast, and stable you are that is then felt by others around you so your presence has a big effect after this next exhale coming all the way back up to all fours inhale pelvis tilts forward the heart lifts exhale round back through downward facing dog feet are wide and this time walking the hands backwards to meet the feet coming into forward fold at the back edge of the mat shake out the head maybe sway your weight from foot to foot hips moving from side to side hands come to the waistline draw the shoulder blades together on the back and on an inhale rise all the way up standing. All right, releasing the hands, coming to the very front of your mat. We'll move through a couple sun salutes, adding several standing poses. Standing poses are always stabilizing and grounding for the body. So as you look down at your feet, make sure the feet are hip distance width apart, toes are spread. Nice little bend in the knees. Inhale, float the arms up into the sky. 
As you exhale, hear your breath as you fold deeply into the forward fold. Inhale, looking up halfway. As you exhale, step the left foot back into a deep lunge. Fingers in alignment with the toes. Pause here. If you'd like to, you can move the pelvis side to side. So if your hips have felt extra tight, when we are in a place of stress, we often sort of really clench in the pelvis and the hips. So we will work today on opening the hips and the pelvis just simply because when we're stressed, without even knowing it, we're sort of tucking under, tucking our pelvis under. On this next inhale, lengthen the spine just a little bit more. You might even lift your gaze slightly as you exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Come back to the sound of your breath, that Ujjayi sounding breath. Inhale, float forward to plank. So strong body here, thighs lifted, belly drawing up. Exhale, hips lift up and back to dog. So we'll do this again. Inhale, coming forward to plank. Strong body, strong arms. Shoulders can even be slightly forward of the wrist. Exhale, back to dog. Last time here, inhale, coming all the way forward to plank. This time as you exhale, lower all the way down onto your abdomen. From here, if you have the space, arms come straight out to the sides of the body. So your arms are in a big T. We'll start to bend the right elbow, draw the right hand in towards the chest, and then roll onto the outside of the left hip. So big chest and shoulder opener for the left side. And stay here. This arm, the right arm in front of you, acts sort of as a kickstand here. And it allows you to open more or to come more towards the floor if this is too intense. And if you'd like even more sensation, bend your right knee. Place that right foot behind you. Breathing into the intensity. So I think this is where, this is one of the ways, at least yoga is helping me during these times, is knowing how to be with some intensity <clears throat> and yet staying in a state of relative ease. If you want more intensity, you might bend your left knee as well. So both knees are bent. Let's stay here for three more breaths and I encourage you to inhale into the intensity. So right into the center of where you feel this most. On this next exhale, slowly coming all the way back onto your belly. Let's pause in the middle, stacking the hands one on top of the other, forehead to the hands. And as you pause here with your breath, let your legs relax, let your buttocks relax, maybe even allow the pelvis to rock side to side a bit. So just seeing if we can open up some space in our bodies and minds. And through this, come back home to our own, um, what I often call our own home frequency, our own sort of inner resonance. So right arm out to the side now. So the arm comes directly out from the shoulder. Time you'll roll onto the outside of the right hip. Right um, temple on the floor, although if you have neck issues, you could even have a block underneath that head if that's easier for you. If you want more sensation, left knee bends, left foot comes flat onto the floor. You might even, if you need more sensation, bend the right knee as well. Deep stretches like this, any kind of extra movement from side to side with the legs can be helpful. Breathing into that right shoulder, stay for three more conscious breaths. Maybe really using the exhale, that big ha sound, that open mouth ujjayi sound to blow out whatever kind of constriction you're finding. On this next exhale, all the way back to center. Draw the hands together right underneath the chest. Come back through all fours to downward facing dog. Good. 
On an inhale, step the left foot between the hands, deep lunge. And pause here. You can certainly have the hands flat on the mat, but be curious here about what happens in your torso when you come up onto the fingertips of your hands. You get a little more lift. Back heel is rooting back, but your gaze is forward, your heart is forward. On an inhale, step the back foot all the way forward to meet the front foot, Uttanasana. Forward fold, shake out the head. Bring your hands to your waistline, pause. Use your hands to actively press the pelvis down. As you inhale, can you lengthen and come all the way up to standing? Place your hands together in front of your heart space. Feel the rootedness of your feet on the earth. Feel your palms lightly touching and how your heart can start to lift towards your hands. So what we're all going through right now is a lot of what Pema children calls groundlessness, not feeling or knowing what's coming next. So again, the more we can root and stabilize in our body, the more our nervous systems begin to settle. Another sound salute here, release the hands. Inhale, float the arms up into the sky. As you exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. On this next inhale, lengthen your heart forward, forward gaze. As you exhale, fold into yourself. Inhale, left foot steps back, deep lunge. And in this deep lunge, allowing some movement, dropping the back knee down to the mat. If you have a sensitive back knee, you could put some padding underneath it. Inhale, rise up. Right hand on the front thigh, left hand on the pelvis, just allowing the pelvis to move forward and back. So again, you heard me say the pelvis holds tension, holds a lot of stress. We especially get really tucked under so we're wanting to move that seat back, move that booty back a little bit, get some more flow here. As you inhale, really move the seat back and then think about scooping the belly out so you can twist, left elbow coming to the outside of the right knee. Palms together, right elbow lifted towards the sky, back toes curled under if you want more work here, more sensation, back knee lifts. As you press that knee or press that elbow into the knee, Think about trying to literally move your low belly up to the right. And the more you press your palms together, the more you can actually access a deeper twist. Left heel is rooting towards the back wall. Crown is extending towards the front wall. Let's take another breath in. Stay here. Exhale, big ha sound, big ujjayi sound. And then from here, releasing hands either side of the front foot. Pause here in a deep lunge before you step back. To downward facing dog. So just setting up the space for yourself to observe and feel. So often when we're pretty numbed out, we don't feel a lot in the beginning. Near the end of the practice, you might observe more emotion. We want to feel. So again, emotions are not bad. There's no bad or damaging emotion. We're actually exquisitely designed to feel all of them. Inhale forward, plank pose. Feel your strength here, your stability. Exhale back to dog. We'll do this again two more times. Move at your own pace. The inhale draws you forward and then hold the breath in as you pause and really engage your strength. Belly ribs up into the body. Exhale back. Inhale forward to plank. This time as you exhale, bend the elbows, slowly lower all the way down onto your belly. Flatten the feet. Take the feet a little wider if your back feels tight. We're gonna do five breaths, cobra sequence here. Inhale, lift the chest, but hover the hands. So this is all the strength of your back lifting you. Exhale, lower, hands come down, forehead comes down. Inhale, keep the legs strong as you lift the chest, hover the hands, draw those shoulder blades together. Exhale, hands lower, forehead lowers. Third breath, inhale, lifting up. Hover the hands, exhale lower. 
On this fourth breath up, lift the chest, hover the hands, lift the legs. So everything is lifted away from the mat. Strong body here. Exhale, lower. Last breath, inhale, chest lifts, hands lift, legs lift, everything is hovered. Now stay here, but release the hands and the feet down to the earth. Inhale, rise a little higher, cobra pose here, shoulders back, heart forward, and then exhale, lower down. Forehead touches the earth. Inhale, coming back through all fours or directly into downward facing dog. In and down dog, feel free to move, to allow the knees to bend, bounce the pelvis. On this next inhale, the left foot steps between the knees, deep lunge. Hands on either side of the front foot. Back leg strong, stable. Slowly dropping the back knee down to the mat, rising up. Left hand on the front of the thigh, maybe the right hand on the waist. Just pulse the pelvis forward and back a couple times. This not only starts to open the front of the pelvis, gets us a little deeper into our front quad. Also encourage focal point. So without knowing it, if we're anxious, our eyes are darting all over the room. So with yoga, if you can find a point on your carpet or your floor or right at horizon level at the wall in front of you and just steady your gaze at one point, again, this is very drawing in for your mind. So our minds are sort of all over right now. If you can focus in at one point, this can make a difference. All right, on this next inhale, move your pelvis way back. So move your seat way back, stick your seat back. Pull the belly into the body. Hook the right elbow on the outside of the left knee. Left hand comes in alignment with the right. So your palms are parallel to the floor, left elbow's lifted. Back knee can stay down or you can lift your back knee away from the mat. We'll take a nice deep breath. Use that inhale to lengthen your spine even more. Use the exhale to feel your low belly twisting up to the left. Yeah, gaze can be straight ahead at horizon or if you want more challenge, you'll look up towards the sky. Take another breath, lengthen, exhale, twist deeper. One more nice deep breath in, exhale, release hands, lift the back knee. On an inhale, step forward to the front of the mat, Uttanasana, forward fold, shaking out the head. We're gonna do three Ardha Uttanasana. So as you inhale, lengthen the spine forward, look forward, thighs back, big ha sound. As you fold, again, inhale, lengthening, long spine, thighs back. Exhale, big sigh, so make some noise in your house. I can feel you, inhale, one more, extension forward, exhale, big sigh, big moan, big release as you fold. Hands come to your waist, draw your shoulder blades together, and on an inhale, come all the way up. Release your hands and then bring the palms together in front of the heart. Maybe close the eyes or let your gaze soften somewhere, one point. And let's just take a moment to feel. If you come to my classes regularly, you hear me say, I sometimes feel like a broken record, but you hear me say that yoga is not a practice of thinking. It is a practice of feeling. So we are using this practice to feel more, not less. Because actually when we feel more is when we're most vitally alive, awake, we're clearest, we make better decisions. All right, let's keep moving, flowing together. Release the hands, you're back at the front of your mat. Inhale, arms float up into the sky. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthening forward, one breath here. Exhale, blow out every bit of air in the lungs. And as you blow out that air, can you feel your low belly lift up a bit more? Inhale, left foot steps back into a deep lunge. All right, left leg back. And turn down the back foot. 
line up the right heel with the back arch and inhale, rise up into Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. So your right knee is tracking over to the right. That's what's opening up this right hip. And again, it's that steadfast, stable, clear gaze right over the middle finger of the right hand. Turn the palms up so you get a bit more of an opening through the chest, the lungs, the shoulders. We'll take a nice deep breath in to straighten the front leg. All right, keep the palms just as they are. As you exhale, bow over to the right, placing your right hand on your shin. Let's take your left hand to your waist. So we're setting up Trikonasana triangle pose here. Firm the legs, press both feet down. You could certainly have a block for this bottom hand but lengthen through your spine first. Once you've got that length, pull left shoulder back, gaze is straight ahead, top arm lifts, taking a nice deep breath in, firm legs. There is a slight twist here. Can you move your belly up to the left just a little bit more? Take a nice deep breath in, exhale, lower hands down either side of the front foot, step back, downward facing dog. Come back to the sound of your breath. Remember, we're just trying to open up some space today. Come home to our own resonance. Staying curious about our bodies. All right, inhale forward plank. And then exhale back to dog. So you know that I like to go back and forth three times. The reason is this flow, there's a flow here that connects us to our breath. We're also building a lot of strength. Plank pose is one of those poses that really starts to stimulate our third chakra, our power center, our sense of confidence and strength. We need this right now. Holding plank here, as long as you like, you can always drop your knees down if that's better. Press more through the index finger mound of your pointer finger. Take a breath, lift that belly, ribs into the body. This time as you exhale, lower all the way down, all the way onto the belly, flattening the feet. Again, we'll do a five breath sequence, just like we did last time. Inhale, chest lifts, hands lift. Exhale, lower, hands come to the earth, forehead comes to the earth. Inhale, lifting the chest, lifting the hands. Exhale, lower. So again, building back strength, building core strength. Inhale, lifting the chest, hovering the hands, lift the legs as well. So everything is lifted. The buttocks are nice and engaged. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the legs, lift the hands. All right, now place the hands on the earth, place the feet on the earth. Inhale, rise up, Bhujangasana, Cobra. So in Cobra, we want to keep this bend in the elbows. If you straighten your arms like this, becomes actually easier, but you lock out energy to your heart. You wanna keep that flow going. So elbow stay bent, shoulders drawn back, heart forward, shoulders back, take a breath, lift a little higher, and then exhale, lower down. Come back through all fours, downward facing dog. Move in down dog in a way that feels good for your body or stay in a place of relative stillness. It'll be different for each of us. But above all, see if you can return to the sound of your breath in the back of the throat. All right, inhale, step the left foot between the hands, deep lunge. Turn your back foot down. Before you come up, make sure that your front heel is aligned with your back arch. And then inhale, rise up. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Gazes out over the middle finger of that left hand and as you turn your palms towards the sky, you automatically feel that chest, heart begin to open. We're gonna take a breath here. Exhale, stay, maybe just a little deeper into that front knee. Now as you inhale, straighten the front leg. So both legs straight. You can adjust your stance a little if you need to. We'll take a breath in as you exhale, triangle pose. So left hand coming to your shin, to a block. I always like to start with this top arm and get it out of the equation to begin with and bring it down to the core of the body, right to the waistline. 
It's an easy pose to lock your knees in, so try to avoid that. Make sure there's a little bend in both knees. We'll take a breath to lengthen through the spine. As you exhale, pull the right shoulder back. Feel your legs strong, both feet evenly and activate, actively pressing into the earth. Top arm can lift. Gaze is either straight ahead if that's best for your neck or you might be gazing up towards your top hand. Let's take a full breath in. Exhale, stay. Inhale again, this time on the exhale, bend into that left knee, return hands to either side of the front foot, pause. Just pause here. And then inhale, step forward, Uttanasana, forward fold. And shake out that head, release the face. Hands come to the waistline, inhale, stand all the way up. Return hands to heart space, pause, close the eyes. Feel. Feel the heat in the body. Feel the touch of your hands. Observe sensations in your feet as they root into the earth. And engage the muscles of the legs. The legs are strong here. They're empowered. Releasing the hands. We're going to flow through one more sun salute sequence. This time you might like a block. We're going to be working our way into Ardha Chandrasana. So you might like half moon pose. You might like one block if that's helpful for you in this pose. Coming to the front of the mat, inhale, float the arms into the sky. Really let the chest lift and expand a bit here as you exhale every bit of air. So it's a conscious blowing out of all of the air in the lungs till you move to a place of emptiness. You might pause, hold the breath out. When you need to inhale, nice, long, long, long spine. As you exhale, folding deeply into yourself. On this next inhale, this time step your right foot back into a deep lunge. Moving your front foot, so again, your front heel, as you turn your back foot down, your front heel intersects your back arch. Inhale, rising up, Virabhadrasana two. We start once again in warrior two. Open palms. Inhale, straighten the front leg, adjust the stance as needed. Inhale again to lengthen, exhale to fold, triangle pose. Long spine, top shoulder back, strong legs, top arm lifts. So we're lengthening in this pose, literally the torso, the sides of the body. There is also that twist action here and any twist pose we do is purifying. It's uh, immune enhancing for the body. So even here, can you feel that low belly, that navel center twist up to the right? Take an inhale, as you exhale this time, right hand comes down to your right, right waistline and look down at your left foot. Bend into that left knee, maybe find a block for underneath your left hand. Step your back foot one step forward. Block comes at an angle off of your front foot. Float the right leg up into the sky. Spread the toes of the right foot. Firm the legs, draw this right shoulder back. From here, you might extend the top arm up. The belly is definitely drawing into the body. Ribs are drawing into the body. There's so much core engagement here. Take a breath. Good, we're just gonna exit out of this pose by bending into the left knee, hands coming to either side of the front foot. You return to a deep lunge. From here, a little bit different variation and beginning to walk the hands to the right. So you'll pivot into a wide-legged forward fold. So prasarata padatanasana, slight little turning of the toes in. Really start to hang the head. Hands come underneath the shoulders. This is an inversion. So head, anytime our head is below our heart, happens in downward facing dog too. Inversions are also really good immune system poses. So all of these, this practice today really is designed to bolster your immunity. 
So in this forward fold, can you shake your head out a little bit? Relax the jaw, but keep these legs so engaged, so empowered. Three more breaths here, breathing deeply into the belly. Maybe even opening the mouth, big ha sound as you exhale. Inhale, lengthen forward. So this is like a halfway lift from this wide-legged forward fold. So long spine, thighs back. If you used a block on the other side, find that block and walk that block with you over to the right. So finding yourself in a deep lunge, turn the back foot down, line up the right heel with the left arch, inhale. Rise up, Vira Bhadrasana two, warrior two. We start here, grounding pose, warrior two. It's not only an empowering pose, it really creates heat in us, but it's super grounding. So if you've got nervous, anxious mind, this is the pose to start to really stabilize you. As you inhale, this time straighten the leg. You may need to slightly adjust your stance from here, bowing over to triangle pose, right hand to the shin, left hand to the waistline. Inhale, lengthening out through the spine. Exhale, pulling that top shoulder back. That's your twist action, the belly twisting up to the left, top arm lifts. Gaze is straight ahead or towards the top hand. Soft gaze, steady gaze. So just make sure wherever your gaze ends up that you keep it steady. Inhale again, think about lengthening through the spine as you exhale, left hand to your waist, bend into your right knee. Maybe find that blue block. Back foot steps forward, one step. So you take a step forward. Right hand comes not forward of the foot, but it actually angles off of the front foot as you lift your back leg up. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose, strong top leg, toes are spread. Feel the top shoulder draw back. This is the twisting action. Left belly or the belly twisting up to the left. Top arm can lift. There's a sense or there can be a sense of freedom and expansion here. Can you actually just soak into that for a moment? So even in the midst of our current situation, we can still experience freedom. Take a breath. Bend into the right knee, step the left foot way back so you're back in a deep lunge. We're gonna return to that wide-legged forward fold. So hands walking around to the left, Prasarata Padatanasana. This time, perhaps adding twist. Again, twist are the purifying poses. So right hand rooted right underneath, sort of centered between the feet and slightly forward of the feet. Left hand comes to the waist. So the legs are straight, thighs are rooting back, spine, belly extending forward. Draw the left shoulder onto the back and maybe extend the left arm up. As you inhale is the lengthening, the exhale is the twisting, belly twisting up to the left. Keep rooting the thighs back. Take a breath in, exhale, release left hand down. Left hand roots now. Palm flat on the floor, right hand comes to the waist. Before you add the twist, inhale, lengthen first. So the longer your spine is, the more space you have to twist. Right shoulder draws onto your back. Top arm floats into the sky. Thighs back, thighs back. Keep pressing the floor hand down so you can rotate that navel up towards the sky. One more breath. Exhale, lower. We're gonna pause here in this forward fold, hands underneath the shoulders. Some of you, crown of the head might be very close to the floor. If it's not quite to the floor, but you wanna practice the sensation of your head on the floor, you might place a block underneath the crown. No matter which variation you stay here in this wide-legged forward fold, make sure that the legs are staying activated. So the legs are not on vacation right now. They're actually very engaged, kneecaps lifting. You're actively pressing the thighs back. 
You could even place your hands on the outsides of the shins and root the shins in towards the midline as you try to broaden the upper thighs apart. So shins in, thighs apart. On this next inhale, walk the fingers forward, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, once again, fold deeply into yourself. Feet might be really wide right now, so perhaps heel toe the feet in a bit. Place your hands on your waistline. Lengthen through the spine on an inhale and rise all the way to standing. Heel toe feet back together underneath you. Hands come together in front of the heart. Once again, we just pause to feel. Again, just creating space, giving ourselves permission to feel. I had a friend text me a couple nights ago and say, I'm totally freaking out. And may all of our responses be, it's okay to freak out. It's okay to feel sadness, fear, anger, irritability, and emotions will not kill us. In fact, emotions are the way we move things through our bodies. The average emotion lasts 60 to 90 seconds, so not long. All right, release the hands. We're gonna work with Rikshasana, a balancing pose. Balancing poses can also have some immune system function. So the act of really staying grounded into yourself, pulled into yourself, which is really what we're learning at this time in history is key, and that's the key action in grounding or excuse me, and balancing. So look down at your feet. We're gonna move into tree pose, slight little bend in the knees. Let's bring all of our weight into the left foot and lift the right foot up. So right foot coming to the ankle, to the calf, or maybe above the knee towards the upper thigh. Once you find the point, root in. So here's that hugging in action, moving into the center core of the body, moving into this steadfast core that allows us to feel and practice more equanimity. Hands pause in front of the heart. If you'd like, you can extend your arms up. Lots of variations for tree pose. If you feel unsteady, make sure your gaze is at the floor. Otherwise, you can bring your gaze more towards the horizon or maybe even lift your gaze all the way up towards the ceiling. Big lift through the heart. Keep hugging the foot towards the leg and the leg towards the foot. And then inhale, palms together. Hands come down first in front of the heart. Release the right foot down and then shake out that left side. Let's reset between sides by coming into a variation of Utkatasana. So heel of the hand right at the tops of the thighs, pressing those thighs back. So you heard me say before, when we're stressed with a really unconsciously, what happens is we all start to tuck under like this. Our thighs pop forward, our buttocks clinch. And so this is a really nice counter pose to sort of what might be automatically happening in many of our bodies. So here, the seat is back, buttocks are back, sit bones are actually lifting up, and you're pressing the femurs back with the strength of your arms. Take a breath in to lengthen a little bit more through the spine. And then we'll straighten the legs. All right, prepare for a second side of Rikshasana tree pose. Weight's now coming into your right foot. Lift the left foot up to the ankle, to the calf, maybe above the knee towards the upper thigh. Get steady here first. So there is this drawing into the midline, pressing the foot into the leg. You might feel your buttocks soften down towards the floor a bit, but lengthen up now, belly ribs into the body, palms right at the heart space. Or if you prefer, you can extend arms up and out. And gaze is at the floor, a little more stabilizing, or at the horizon, or if you feel more expansive, you might really start to lift your gaze towards the sky. You've lost track of the sound of that breath. Can you come back to it? The ocean in the back of the throat. Inhale, palms together, hands down, right in front of the heart. Release the left foot to the floor again, shake the right side out, and then return to Utkatasana, this variation of Utkatasana. Seat back, thighs back. A lot of people feel this quite a bit in their low back. So what we're doing here is reestablishing a natural curve in your low back, which is how it's designed to be. 
should keep pressing the thighs back, keep lengthening the spine up. Take a nice deep breath in, and then exhale, straighten the legs. All right, from here, we're gonna come down onto our mat. We'll come down through Malasana, if that's available to you. So toes turn out just slightly. We'll take a breath in to lengthen up and then exhale, sink down into squat pose. Palms come together in front of the heart. So for some of you, you might notice that your heels are lifted away from the mat. This actually really isn't that problematic, just you might have slightly shorter Achilles tendons. But you could certainly put a folded blanket underneath your heels if that makes you feel more stable. Now, the, another thing that'll help us feel stable is to really hug the arms in, or hug the legs in towards the upper arms. And then inhale again, lengthen up. Close the eyes or let your gaze soften. Come back to the sound of your breath. the hands sitting all the way back, extending the legs forward for Dandasana, staff pose. If you feel a lot of rounding through your spine right now, you might just elevate slightly up on a blanket. Move through a twist forward fold sequence and then come onto our backs where we're going to do inversions, which is really key for our immune system. Taking your left hand, just draw your left hand under your left knee, bend the left knee, and step the left foot over the right leg. If you want, you could certainly bend the, um, excuse me, the right knee and pull it around so you're in a slightly more compressed. For me, the leg straight is a better option, but you do what feels best for your body. First thing we wanna do before we twist is ensure that we have a tall spine. So sit tall, nice, long, tall spine. Before you twist, take a deep breath in. We call this open, open to grace, soften the skin. Float your right arm out to the side. As you exhale, wrap your right arm around the leg or hook the elbow as you twist to the left. We'll stay here again for five breaths. Inhaling, sit tall. Exhale, belly moving to the left. Maybe the left finger's even walking back a little bit. Your body is warm, so I really encourage you on these exhales to go deeper to the left each time. Twists are perhaps one of the most detoxifying of the yoga poses. So use this opportunity with this warm body to really bring some things out. Inhale, on the exhale, we slowly come back to center. We straighten the left leg, let the knees bounce. Going into a twist on the second side. So right knee bending, right foot steps over the left. You hug in and lengthen first. So you sit as tall as possible, grow as tall through that sp spine as possible. Left arm out to the side, reestablish tall spine, and then exhale, twisting to the right. You can either hug the arm in or hook the elbow, whatever's best for you. So the pelvis is rooted, but with every inhale, the spine is lengthening and just opening up space today. Trying to come home to our own frequency that's a little bit more stable, steadfast. I'm actually reading a lot of Pema Chodron right now. She's one of my favorite thinkers, teachers. And uh, there's a book that she writes called Practicing Peace in Times of War, which feels somewhat relevant. And she says something very simple. If you want there to be peace, the condensed instruction is to stay with whatever tightens initially and don't spin off. Keep it simple. So the instruction is to stay with intensity. Don't spin off. Go into 
what feels really scary. Take a breath and then exhale. We'll come out of that nice long twist, extend the legs forward, bounce the knees a bit. Baddha Konasana, so soles of the feet together, holding on to the bottoms of the feet. You can interlace your fingers and slide them underneath the feet. Once again, we're working with tall spine here. This is also, by the way, opening up that pelvis, that seat of emotion, where so many of us are carrying a lot of repressed stuff. So as you inhale and lengthen up, think about this left knee extending over to the left a little bit more. And then on this next exhale, can you extend your right knee over to the right a bit more? You can stay in this upright position, at least for me, this feels nice for my low back. You could also add a forward fold. So forward folds are calming for the nervous system. So elbows to the knees, folding over the feet. Keep moving those sit bones back. And I'm gonna encourage you to stay with this last portion of the practice because what you've done is open the body so much through the different asana and now really is the time for your body to unravel emotion to let yourself feel a little bit more so coming out of the pose straighten the legs we're going to come all the way onto the backs i'd like you to have a block if that's possible so if you do have a block you can also use a really thick book by the way if you don't have a yoga block at home and we'll come down onto our backs, engaging the core. So arms come up shoulder height, palms towards the sky. Take a breath in to lengthen as you exhale round. So tuck the chin round, slowly coming all the way down. Legs stay engaged. So there's a real empowerment in the legs as you come all the way down onto the earth. Then as you arrive, placing your hands on your belly and bending your knees. And take a couple windshield wipers, dropping the knees to the right and then down to the left. Again, this portion of the practice is so essential. So remember at the beginning, I talked about when any of us face stressful, unknown times, our tendency is to distract, to numb, to dissociate, to try not to feel too much. So you've opened all these energy channels in the body, which means you are feeling more right now. And I encourage you to stay with it. Stay with it. All right, our final big immune system busting pose. We're gonna work our way in and out of Satu Bandha, bridge pose, into Vipariti Karani, legs floating in the sky. So let's find the deep diaphragmatic belly breaths also Find once again the sound of your breath in the back of the throat. Inhale, lift the pelvis up, float the arms all the way up overhead. As you exhale, coming back down, pelvis to the earth, arms down to the earth. We're gonna do a total of five of these. So keep going at your own pace. And you can get really curious here, trying to time the movement of your body with your breath. So. Don't set your arms and pelvis down on the earth until the very last bit of breath is blown out of the lungs. Same as you lengthen up. Keep going here in and out of bridge pose. It's following the rhythm of your breath. Try not to look side to side here, so just keep going. Gaze should be up towards the ceiling. For me, this is my fifth breath up. So wherever you are in your sequence, on your fifth breath up, hold bridge pose, arms float back down to the earth, interlace fingers underneath you, and then walk shoulders deeply underneath you. Press the feet down, lift the pelvis up, so really action here is can I ground into the earth? Can I press feet actively down into the earth and then allow the chest to open? So again, we're gonna stay here for another good 30 seconds or so, just like Pema says. When you feel things tighten up, when you feel things that are intense, can you actually stay with it? So we're gonna have lots of 
times in these next couple of weeks to practice staying with intensity. So instead of numbing, running, distracting, Facebooking, eating, can you actually just be with the intensity of the anxiety or the fear or the worry, whatever it is? All right, I know that I'm feeling this in my thighs and my glutes. Let's stay here, take a breath. Exhale, soften, soften through the face, the jaw, the shoulders, another breath in. And now exhale, come all the way down. Good counter pose here, extend the legs straight up into the sky. You'll feel your low back now. Make contact with the earth and just let the legs sort of shake and bounce a little bit here. Bending the knees, feet come to the floor. If you've got that yoga block, now we'll lift the hips and pelvis again for set to banda, but slide the block right underneath the sacrum. Let the sacrum release down onto the block. Suddenly, you don't have to use your glutes and the strength of your hips and your thighs and your legs to hold you up. So now this pose is actually a little bit more of surrender. Can you actually just surrender into the block? You certainly don't have to work as hard but really focus on can you lift the chest, draw the shoulders underneath you. So bridge pose, and if you'd like, you can extend legs up, the Viridi Karani, are thought to really affect the thymus gland, which is a big producer of, I believe, immunoglobin A, which is part of our immune system function. So anytime we're in these inverted poses, we started here today too on our bolster with that modified fish pose. So the big opening through the chest, through the shoulders. Here we're also getting the inversion. So the pelvis is higher than the heart. And so with the legs sort of floating above you, see if you can just sink into a little more softness not having to force anything, not having to figure anything out, just enjoying the space to feel yourself, feel into your emotions, your body, your breath. big deep breath in this time as you exhale if your legs are extended up bend your knees and slowly tap your feet down to the earth lift the pelvis up to slide the block out and slowly come all the way down and as you arrive down pause here in the constructive rest position so knees bent hands just resting gently on the belly And we can only be taking care of our own internal space, our physical body, our heart, our mind. So as these, in these final moments of this practice, take a moment to tune in if there's any other movements, postures, twist. Maybe you have a headstand practice, something you'd like to do to really feel like you've done a full practice today. And then we'll all settle into Shavasana. And I'm gonna encourage you again to stay here. I'm gonna sit up so I can better hold space and not go into my own meditative place in Shavasana. But I encourage you to stay here for Shavasana. This is the most important pose always of any practice. Especially during these times, the more restoration we allow ourselves, the better. So here I'm holding space for you for another seven minutes. So as you find yourself in Shavasana, release the shaping of the breath. I've been bringing you back over and over to the Ujjayi sounding breath, let it go. And 
see if you can continue just to hang out with yourself in space. Using this last period of time to once again come home to your own resonance, to your own frequency. Stay with this deep rest. On your next exhale, just watch your body settle maybe 5% more, just a little deeper.
take in a deeper breath. And on the exhale, just watch yourself soften a bit more. So no need to rush, no need to hurry off. Just coming out of this in a really compassionate way for yourself. So bringing a little bit of movement into your fingers, you could stretch up your arms up overhead, sigh it out, take a yawn. Eventually roll onto your right side, which is 